Hey, God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon, and today I'm excited to bring this exhortation, which is to challenge every person on the channel. I want to first say this and be clear, friends. Many of you think that only believers are listening to motivating you to win. It's not true. We have a lot of people on this channel on a regular basis who have not been born again. They have not experienced Jesus Christ. They have not had what some refer to as a, an awakening. They have not received the seal of the Holy Ghost. They are not sure they have the Holy Ghost. Beloved, if you're questioning whether you have God's Spirit in you, it is likely you do not. I can assure you, beloved, when you have crossed over, see the bridge a little ways up? See that bridge? Friends, Christ is the bridge between darkness and light. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And once you have come into the light and the life, you're going to know it. Don't let nobody trick you, beloved. You cannot meet God and his son Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, and not know about it. It's not possible. Don't let religion, which is a counterfeit. Religion is a counterfeit. If you smoke it, it's worse than crack cocaine. And I'm using that metaphorically. It's a metaphor. If you smoke on religion, if you, if you drink on religion, if you uh, uh, put your hope in religion, you will be deceived because it's worse than crack cocaine. It's worse than any alcoholic's addiction. Friends, it is a deceiver. Jesus Christ said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will glorify him. He will lift up Christ. He told Nicodemus, when Nicodemus came to him at night, he knew what Nicodemus wanted, and he told him what? You must be born again. So I want us to look at some things that will help you gauge whether or not you have been born again. Have you been born again? So let's take a look at some things that you can just look over and ponder in your life. Your life, my friends. Number one, when you have not been born again, you are focused on what God can do for you rather than really what God or rather what you can do for God. You have a Santa Claus mentality. You think that God is your personal Santa Claus and genie. You don't think about the sacrifice of Christ. You are focused constantly on getting your bills paid, getting you a new job, getting you a spouse, getting you getting ahead, um, your family. You're only focused on getting, getting, getting. It is likely, my friend, you have not been born of his spirit. Number two, these are just things for us to ponder, okay? Number two, you rely on money, not faith. In other words, when you don't have money, you do not have any faith. It is likely, my friend, his spirit is not in you. Remember, it is the work of the Holy Spirit that sanctifies us, teaches us, and helps us to maneuver through the vicissitudes of life. It is the work of the Holy Spirit, my friend. So we are not alone when we walk with God. We are not alone. So therefore, friends, when you, moving to number three, because money, the lack thereof, could cause great pressure. It could cause great desolation of the heart and mind and the soul. Beloved, when you, number three, cannot handle pressure, you fall to pieces very easily and you can't sense the 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 Holy Spirit undergirding your heart to have faith and to trust God. Remember, Paul and Silas was in prison. They were detained. 
Many of us, we're nowhere near being detained for preaching the gospel. These men were in prison and the word of the Lord says they began to sing unto the Lord. They began to praise the Lord and God sent an angel to set them at liberty. Beloved, many of us follow me today, my friend, because many people are so consumed with the cares of their life. They, they, Never think of singing unto the Lord and keeping a song of praise and thanksgiving to him because they are so self-absorbed. And listen, beloved, you have to check yourself. How do you handle pressure? Remember, we're at different ages and stages, but God is faithful to teach us and to help maneuver us via the Holy Spirit. Number four, this is something to gauge if you have God's Spirit. If you have been born again, you will likely desire to work with the Holy Spirit in bringing forth the gifts of the Spirit. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healing, miracles. Beloved, He will begin to lead and guide you into the truth how to work with Him to help other people. You need those gifts. When you are born of the Spirit, you become spiritual. Therefore, you begin to work with equipment for lack of better word, that you can't explain. You know you know things. You have knowledge that is not just coming to you and you're not manufacturing it. This is a, 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 an ability that comes via Holy Spirit. But if you don't have His Spirit and you're not born again, you don't have a clue when a person is speaking in regards to spiritual gifts because you're not born of his spirit. Number five, there's no regard for the blood of Jesus. When you understand the sufferings, the trauma of Jesus, beloved, you will have a regard for that blood. And, and it is that regard for the blood of Jesus that true born-again believers, according to Jesus' own words, you must be born again. When you are, I tell you, my friend, the Holy Spirit will bring to your thoughts this amazing sacrifice for your sin. When you don't ever think about Christ's sacrifice, it is likely because he is not dwelling within you, my friend. Number six, out of balance with God's love. When a person is not truly born again, they are easily swayed to only embrace that God is just love, 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 love. They don't want to talk about judgment. They don't want to talk about hell. They don't want to talk about anything negative regarding God. Why? Because many that are not truly born of His Spirit are still walking in lifestyles of willful sin and they don't want to hear it. Number seven. So when you are around people that's just love, 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 friend, I promise you it is because somewhere there is secret sin in their lives or they're covering or trying to for their loved ones when people are enamored with their loved ones and they're in violation of Luke chapter 14 where Jesus said in order to be his disciples to cross that bridge to go over from darkness to light Jesus said you must my friend love him more than your mother your father your auntie your spouse no one can have your heart no one, my friend, but him. Him first. Let me put it like that. They can have a part of your heart, but they're not supposed to have your heart. We are to love God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. Your allegiance must be to the one who has saved you from his judgment. And that is the creator via Jesus Christ. Number seven. So that love, love, love. Watch people that's always talking about it.
And sometimes I can't express it enough. There's secret sin in their lives. Number seven, you refuse to talk about hell. Now that's similar to number six, but here's the difference. When a person has not experienced regeneration, real salvation with the baptism of the Spirit, you can't be born again without the Holy Spirit. It's not possible. You have the Holy Spirit, my friend, but you have to begin to move towards what Jesus said. If you are hungry, you will be filled. If you're thirsty, God will quench that thirst. I'm a witness, my friend. But when you don't want to talk about hell, you do disregard it. You scoff at it. It makes you feel some kind of way. Friends, when we really have God's Spirit, we don't mind hearing about hell. We want to hear about hell. You know why? Because it keeps us strong. It keeps us accurate. It keeps us sharp edge where we are, are shunning evil. We are walking the straight and the narrow and it doesn't bother you. If it bothers you, my friend, take a look at it. Number eight, once saved, always saved. This doctrine is in violation of 1 John chapter 3 that says when you are converted, when the seed of Christ comes, we no longer practice willful sin. This is what we have to know, my friend. And the scriptures tells us, in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and 9, 19, let everyone that names the name of Christ turn, depart from evil, from iniquity, from sin. Let everyone that names that name. So beloved, we have an obligation to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. Beloved, you cannot walk this thing out if you are not dedicated to the Spirit, the voice within. The Holy Spirit is our navigator. He is the one to teach us the kingdom and to sanctify us. And beloved, he is not going to let you believe a lie that you can continue to be a fornicator, continue to be a liar and an adulterer and still smoke your weed, still set your body out there, ladies, still playing the harlot on the down low, still scheming planning the demise of others, using your tongue to cut and destroy people's reputations, discussing information, friends, that you should be talking to them about. And let me tell you, friends, it's so easy to murder other people with our mouths. Oh, yes, it is. But these are the things that we are called to turn from. So when you have not been sincerely born of the Spirit, it's so easy to justify why you keep living with that man and that woman that's not your spouse. It is easy to keep justifying why, you're, why you are stealing from your job. It's so easy, friend, because his Spirit is not within. He will convict you. Yes, he will. Number nine, over emotional. When you find a person always crying over their life, everything is all about their kids, their grandkids, their job, their mortgage. It's all earthly things. This person cries constantly but doesn't have any regard for the masses of people that's around them this on their way to hell. Oh, beloved, beloved, is it you? Do you have a regard for where people are going to end up in eternity? When you are born of his spirit, you begin to walk out the characteristics of God and the will of God. And what is the will of God? That no man be lost, no man perish but they come to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. So when you, beloved, have no regard for souls, you're just constantly all about the cares of your life, you have to check yourself. Number 10, suicide. If you are a person, person grappling with murdering yourself, killing yourself, friends, it is sin to ponder murder of anyone. And if that's your meditation, I can assure you, you have not 
been born again or you have walked away from your first love. You have what we regard as backslidden. Number 11, if you are exalting your race of people, Right now, we see all these race, race, racial tensions. Friends, don't be deceived and don't be distracted. Make sure you are not filled with hatred for another race group. If you regard your people, our people, you use this type of language, you are likely, you're a racist. Oh, yes, you are. Because in this kingdom, there is no Jew nor Gentile, black, white, green, or purple. We are all one in the body of Christ, joined together by that precious blood. Hatred, my friend, that's what racism is. If it's in you and you're using this language, you need to check yourself. Because when we're born again, the Spirit is the teacher. And He will begin to make you feel uncomfortable about that type of language. Oh, yes. Number 12, you have a yuck mouth. I have done a video before. When you are a person constantly using foul language, I'm talking about you dropping the F-bomb, the B-bomb, the S-bomb, the D-bomb. You are just filled with constant perversion of your mouth, of your tongue. Friend, check yourself. How can good and evil come out of that same mouth when you are constantly using foul language? Friend, check yourself. The Holy Spirit will deal with you. He won't let you be left to your own foolishness, my friend. And listen, that yuck mouth, that profanity, is a telltale sign. Because what comes out of the mouth is what's in your heart. Number 13, constant addiction. You are constantly going back and forth, back and forth. There is no strength from within to put away the things that Jesus suffered for. Friends, you've got to check yourself according to Galatians chapter 5. It tells you who will not inherit the kingdom. If you want to know, it's right there. Galatians chapter 5. You have to put away that sorcery. Stop smoking your weed and your cigarettes. It's all a form of idolatry, my friend. And no idolater will enter the kingdom. We have to all work out our soul salvation, my friend. Number 14, as we get ready to wind this up, you exalt church instead of Jesus Christ. Your whole conversation is church, church, church. But do you not know, beloved, except a man is born again, you must be born again. Jesus did not say you must have a church home. You must be a church member. He said you must be born again. Number 15, you exalt the law of Moses. You are consumed. You are obsessed with Preaching and living out the Old Testament, the Old Covenant given to Moses. The Holy Spirit will not let you be deceived because whom the Son has set free, we are free indeed. Number 16, you blaspheme God. You see this as I close this exhortation. You see this very prominent with so-called Christian comedians. They are constantly using foul language. They are constantly using perverted speech in their uh, uh, um, discourse. They are filled with blasphemous uh, um, comedy skits and, and, and whatever they call these things that they as they do their little comedy uh, uh, roles. Friends, they are mocking spiritual things. This person is not born of God's Spirit. God would not allow you or me or anyone to mock holy things. And if you are a partaker, you're going to comedy, quote, Christian comedy, you now because of the COVID-19, no one's really gathering in, in comedy shows and that. However, you will watch this stuff and it entertains you. Beloved, check yourself. Let us consider these things. Once you cross over that bridge from darkness to light, the bridge is Christ. 
The bridge is Christ Jesus from darkness to light. Question on the floor. Have you been born again? God bless you, my friend. Till next time, let us all consider these things. God bless.